The region known as Dineta, located approximately 60 miles west of the Rio Chama Valley, served as the traditional Navajo homeland during the Spanish colonial period. Spanish military expeditions in the 1770s targeted Navajo settlements in the Mount Taylor and Chusca mountain regions, initiating a pattern of conflict and accommodation that would characterize Navajo-European relations for the next century. American acquisition of the Southwest following the Mexican-American War in 1846 marked a new phase in Navajo history. General Stephen Kearney's occupation of Santa Fe brought the Navajo into direct contact with U.S. military forces. The Treaty of Bear Springs, negotiated in 1846 between Navajo leaders and Colonel Alexander Donovan, attempted to establish peaceful relations, but proved ineffective in preventing ongoing conflicts between Navajo communities and American settlers. The most traumatic period in modern Navajo history occurred during the 1860s, under the direction of Brigadier General James Carleton. Carleton's strategy involved the forced relocation of both Apache and Navajo peoples to a reservation at Bosque Redondo, New Mexico. In 1863, Colonel Kit Carson began implementing scorched-earth tactics against Navajo communities, destroying crops, livestock, and dwellings while fouling water sources. Beginning in 1864, approximately 9,000 Navajo individuals were forced to undertake what became known as the Long Walk, a 300-mile march to internment at Bosque Redondo. The conditions at Bosque Redondo were catastrophic, with inadequate food, water, and shelter for the relocated population. The alkaline water caused health problems, crops failed repeatedly, and conflicts with traditional enemies, including Mescalero Apache groups, also relocated to the area, created additional tensions. The Navajo refer to this period as Na Honzud, the fearing time. The failure of the Bosque Redondo experiment became apparent by the late 1860s, leading to negotiations for the Treaty of Bosque Redondo in 1868. This treaty allowed surviving Navajo people to return to a portion of their traditional homeland, establishing the foundation for the modern Navajo reservation. The post-1868 reservation period brought new challenges as the Navajo rebuilt their communities while navigating federal policies designed to assimilate Native American populations into mainstream American society. The establishment of Bureau of Indian Affairs schools, beginning with Fort Defiance in 1870, represented a systematic effort to replace Navajo cultural practices with European-American customs and values. These boarding schools enforced English-only policies, prohibited traditional religious practices, and separated children from their families for extended periods. The militaristic discipline, inadequate nutrition, and harsh living conditions at many schools created lasting trauma within Navajo communities. The Miriam Report of 1929 documented these abuses, and led to some educational reforms, though the basic assimilationist approach continued for decades. The Navajo Livestock Reduction Program, implemented during the 1930s under Commissioner John Collier, represented another significant federal intervention in Navajo life. Concerned about soil erosion and overgrazing during the Dust Bowl era, federal officials mandated substantial reductions in Navajo sheep, goat, and cattle herds. This policy devastated the Navajo economy, as livestock represented not only subsistence resources, but also wealth, status, and cultural identity within Navajo society. The reduction program particularly affected Navajo women, who traditionally owned livestock in the matrilineal kinship system. The loss of their primary income source created long-term economic hardship and undermined traditional gender roles within Navajo communities. Despite unified opposition from Navajo leaders and communities, the program continued into the 1950s, creating lasting resentment toward federal Indian policies. World War II marked a turning point in Navajo-U.S. relations, particularly through the contributions of the Navajo Code Talkers. The U.S. Marine Corps recruited approximately 400 Navajo men to develop and implement an unbreakable communication code based on the Navajo language. The complex grammar and unique sounds of Navajo, combined with its limited number of non-Navajo speakers, made it ideal for military communications. The Code Talkers underwent intensive training at Marine Corps facilities in California before deployment to Pacific Theater operations. Their code proved crucial in major battles including Iwo Jima and Okinawa, with Japanese forces never successfully deciphering Navajo communications. The program remained classified until the 1960s, when the contributions of these men finally received public recognition. The Navajo representing the largest Native American tribe in North America, with over 350,000 enrolled citizens, possess a complex genetic heritage, 
that reflects their ancestral journey from the subarctic regions of North America to their current homeland in the southwestern United States. Their genetic origins provide compelling evidence for the broader narrative of human migration to the Americas, while revealing unique patterns of population movement and cultural adaptation within the continent. The foundational genetic heritage of the Navajo, like all Native American populations, traces back to ancient Siberian populations who migrated across the Beringia land bridge during the last glacial maximum. Archaeological and genetic evidence indicates that the ancestors of Native Americans diverged from ancient East Asian populations approximately 25,000 years ago, coinciding with the emergence of the Beringia land bridge. This vast landmass, up to 1,000 kilometers wide at its greatest extent, connected northeastern Siberia to western Alaska when sea levels dropped due to global ice formation. The immediate ancestors of these Beringian migrants originated from populations inhabiting the Altai Cyan upland and the lower Amur of Okhotsk region of Siberia. These founding populations carried the ancestral forms of the mitochondrial DNA haplogroups that would later characterize Native American populations. The genetic evidence suggests that these early migrants may have lived in Beringia itself for thousands of years before dispersing into the American continents developing the distinctive genetic signatures that distinguish Native American populations from their Asian ancestors. The Navajo belong to the Southern Athapascan Linguistic and Cultural Group, which represents one of the most remarkable population movements within North America. Linguistic evidence conclusively demonstrates that the ancestors of the Navajo and Apache migrated from the Mackenzie Basin of northwestern Canada and eastern Alaska to the southwestern United States. This migration is supported by the retention of archaic vocabulary among southwestern Athapascan speakers that relates to northern environments and activities. Most scholars agree that this Athapascan migration from Canada concluded by the early 1500s, with the various Apachean groups beginning to separate from one another shortly thereafter. The migration appears to have occurred between 1000 and 1500 AD, with some evidence suggesting arrival as early as 1200 to 1300 AD though the earliest definitively dated Navajo archaeological site is from 1541 AD in northwestern New Mexico. The timing and roots of this migration remain subjects of scholarly debate, with proposed pathways including movement through the Great Plains, the Great Basin, and the Rocky Mountain corridors. The paternal genetic lineage of the Navajo is dominated by haplogroup QM242, which represents the primary Y-chromosome haplogroup among Native American populations. Among indigenous North Americans, QM242 reaches extraordinary frequencies in Na Dene speakers, averaging 68%, with the Navajo showing the highest recorded frequency at 92%. This remarkably high frequency exceeds even that of closely related Apache groups, which show frequencies of 78% in Apache and 87% in San Carlos Apache populations. The QM242 haplogroup originated in the Altai region of Asia, and exhibits its highest frequencies in Siberian populations, particularly in regions between the Altai Mountains and Lake Baikal. Among Siberian populations, the Chelkans show frequencies of 60%, Tubalars 41%, and various other Siberian groups maintain significant frequencies of this haplogroup. The distribution pattern supports the hypothesis of a central Siberian origin for the paternal lineages of Native American founding populations, with subsequent founder effects amplifying the frequency of QM2 42 among specific Native American groups. The exceptional frequency of QM242 among the Navajo suggests either a strong founder effect during the Athapascan migration or selective pressures that favored this lineage. The distribution of Y chromosome haplogroups among Native North Americans shows significant correlation with geography, and the Athapascan migration represents a clear example of how small founding populations can carry distinctive genetic signatures across vast distances. The maternal genetic heritage of the Navajo reflects a more complex pattern than their paternal lineages, demonstrating the effects of admixture and cultural exchange following their arrival in the Southwest. All indigenous American mitochondrial DNA can be traced to five founding haplogroups, A, B, C, D, and X, with specific Native American subgroups including A2, B2, C1B, D1, and X2A. The Apachean groups, including the Navajo, exhibit high frequencies of a derived subclade of haplogroup A that likely originated in the subarctic, defined as the A2A clade. 
Among Navajo populations, haplogroup A2A accounts for approximately 13% of maternal lineages, while Apache groups show higher frequencies around 48%. This haplogroup provides the strongest genetic link to their northern Athapascan origins, as A2A, mtDNAs are characteristic of circumpolar regions from Siberia to Greenland, with southwest distribution limited primarily to Athapascan-speaking groups. The presence of A2A among the Navajo and Apache represents direct maternal lineage continuity with their subarctic ancestors, though few individuals in northern subarctic populations actually belong to this subclade, suggesting it may have been a relatively minor lineage in the ancestral population that underwent founder effects during the southern migration. Unlike their northern Athapascan relatives, who are essentially monomorphic for haplogroup A, the Navajo and Apache populations show significant diversity in mitochondrial DNA, with many sequences belonging to haplogroups B and C that are characteristic of southwestern non-Athapascan populations. Approximately half of Apache maternal lineages belong to haplogroup A, while the others are primarily from haplogroups B and C, and many of these haplotypes are shared with non-Athapascan speaking populations in the southwest. The common ancestor of contemporary A2A Mitogenomes originated approximately 4 to 7,000 years ago, much later than B2A haplogroups. The presence of B and C haplogroups among the Navajo represents genetic admixture with local southwestern populations, who had been established in the region for thousands of years before the Athapascan arrival. Haplogroup X2A represents one of the five founding maternal lineages of Native Americans, though it occurs at only about 3% frequency for the total indigenous population of the Americas. Among the Navajo, X2A occurs at a frequency of 7%, higher than many other southwestern groups but lower than some northern populations where it can reach 25% among Algonquian peoples. X2A is unique among Native American founding haplogroups because its sister clades are found in Europe and Western Asia rather than East Asia. Though the Native American X2, a subclade, has never been found in the Old World. The predominant theory for X2A's presence in North America is migration along with the other founding haplogroups, from a source in the Altai Mountains of Central Asia. The pattern of asymmetrical genetic exchange is particularly interesting given current Navajo marriage practices, which are strongly matrilineal suggesting that the acquisition of B and C group maternal lineages occurred early in their southwest experience, before current cultural practices were established. Based on these genetic patterns, researchers have suggested that the proto-Apachians migrated to the southwest in a single migration that included a relatively small number of females, and after arriving, the southern Athapascans acquired a large number of non-Athapascan maternal lineages through admixture with females from southwestern tribes. This pattern of male-mediated migration, followed by local female admixture, explains the discordance between the extremely high frequency of QM242 in Navajo males and the diversity of maternal lineages in the population. Archaeological evidence supports this interpretation, as Spanish records document that when Europeans arrived, trade between established Pueblo peoples and southern Athapascans was well established, with Athapascans travelling to Pueblos to exchange bison meat, hides and stone goods for maize and woven cotton. The Navajo willingness to adopt Pueblo lifestyle elements combined with practices such as Apache raiding and capturing of neighbouring women, likely introduced B2A and other haplogroups into the southern Athapascan gene pool. The majority of the Navajo population resides in Arizona, with 140,000 individuals, followed by New Mexico with 108,000 residents. This concentration reflects the historical settlement patterns and the location of the Navajo Nation's governmental and cultural centers. The Navajo language, Diné Bizad, belongs to the southern Athabascan language family and remains one of the most widely spoken Native American languages today. The term Navajo derives from the Spanish designation Apaches de Navajo, which itself came from the Tua word Navahu, meaning farm fields adjoining a valley. The Navajo prefer their self-designation Diné, which simply translates to the people. Upon arriving in the southwest, the Navajo adapted their subsistence strategies to the new environment. Initially hunters and gatherers, they gradually incorporated agricultural practices learned from neighboring Pueblo peoples particularly the cultivation of corn, beans, and squash, the traditional three sisters of Native American agriculture. The introduction of livestock by Spanish colonizers in the 16th and 17th centuries proved transformative for Navajo society, as sheep and goats became central to their economy, 
diet, and cultural practices. Spanish colonial records from the 17th century document extensive trade relationships between the Navajo and Pueblo peoples. The Navajo traded meat and hides for agricultural products and woven goods, establishing economic networks that would persist for centuries. Navajo society is organized around a complex kinship system based on matrilineal clans, known as Kei. This system defines relationships between individuals and families, while regulating marriage practices through exogamy rules that prohibit marriage within one's own clan or the clans of grandparents. The clan system maintains social cohesion across the geographically dispersed Navajo population, creating bonds that can span hundreds of miles. Traditional Navajo society follows matrilineal and matrilocal residence patterns, where married couples live near the wife's family and children belong to the mother's clan, while being born for the father's clan. Property inheritance, including livestock, land use rights, and dwellings, traditionally passes through female lineages. The Hogan, the traditional Navajo dwelling, holds deep spiritual significance beyond its practical function as shelter. Traditional Hogans are constructed with doors facing east to welcome each day's sunrise. Navajo spiritual beliefs center on the concept of hojo, which encompasses balance, harmony, beauty, and right living. This philosophical framework guides individual behavior and community relationships while emphasizing the interconnectedness of all life. Navajo creation stories describe the emergence of the Diné through previous worlds to reach the current fourth world, or glittering world, where they must maintain balance between earthly and spiritual realms. The four sacred mountains that bound the traditional Navajo homeland, Blanca Peak, Mount Taylor, San Francisco Peaks, and Hesperus Mountain, serve as spiritual anchors and directional markers. These peaks correspond to specific colors, times of day, and sacred beings within Navajo cosmology. Navajo ceremonies serve primarily to restore harmony when illness, misfortune, or imbalance occurs. These complex rituals may last several days and involve elaborate sand paintings, traditional songs, prayers, and ritual actions. The night chant represents one of the most complex Navajo ceremonials, involving up to 24 dancers wearing sacred masks representing specific holy people. This nine-day ceremony combines healing rituals with community gathering and cultural transmission, demonstrating the integration of spiritual, medical, and social functions within Navajo ceremonial life. The modern Navajo nation faces complex challenges in balancing economic development with cultural preservation. Diné College, the first tribally controlled college in the United States, exemplifies efforts to provide higher education that respects Navajo cultural values while preparing students for success in broader American society. The Navajo language remains one of the most widely spoken Native American languages, with an estimated 150,000 to 170,000 speakers. Traditional arts continue to evolve, while maintaining cultural authenticity. Navajo weavers produce textiles that command respect in both art markets and cultural contexts, with patterns and techniques passed down through generations of women. Similarly, Navajo silversmiths create jewelry that represents both artistic achievement and cultural identity, with squash blossom necklaces and concha belts serving as recognizable symbols of Navajo craftsmanship. The Navajo Nation today represents a successful example of indigenous self-governance within the American political system. The challenges of economic development, education, and cultural preservation require ongoing adaptation and innovation, but the Navajo people's historical resilience suggests they will continue to thrive as the Diné the people who belong to the land between the sacred mountains.